Jeremy Velvin. Welcome to another episode of Telescope Tips. Now today I'm here with Freddie Diaz, Hello. Memphis Astronomical Society, and today we're going to look at the sun. Now, looking at the sun can be a dangerous thing if you don't know what you're doing. So we're going to talk first about some tips, safety tips to prepare you to safely look at the sun. It can be an incredible experience to look at the sun. Great big orange ball, of course, the closest star to our Earth. It's what gives us light and heat and keeps us alive, but it can ruin your whole life if you don't do it the right way. So Freddie, let's talk about some solar safety tips to get started. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, yes, we're going to see the sun, but we need to first uh, introduce you to several things you need to keep in mind when you are going to watch the sun. The first is uh, you got to protect yourself. Uh, well, how do you do that? Well, you need to, you, you will be exposed to the sun for a while, especially in the summer. Uh, you need to use sunblock, like uh, you can use a spray or you can use one uh, in cream. Uh, always do that far from your telescope so you don't uh, put any type of oil in the telescope. Then wash your hands so you don't, your, your hands are not greasy when you touch the telescope. Okay, you also, if you are planning by example to go at night also observing, I would recommend, strongly recommend that you use sunglasses all the time and just limit your exposure to the light of the sun to the minimum possible. That way, when you go observing at night, you won't have, you won't, your eyes will be easier to accost, the custom at uh, the night vision. The other thing is uh, filters. Uh, you, you can watch the sun if you have the proper filter. Uh, watching the sun without the proper filter in the telescope can be very bad for your eyes. It will mean immediate, immediate blindness. You will uh, lose your vision on the eye that is looking at the telescope. Giving that in, into consideration, you will see here that we have three types of telescopes and all of them are filtered now. And do not leave the telescope unattended, especially if children are around. Uh, this is serious stuff. You gotta be protected yourself and you gotta protect the ones around you because you don't want an accident to happen and somebody's life be going for that. Okay, so let's talk about the types of filters you use for solar observing. Obviously, you can see Freddie's apparatus set up here. He's actually got a filter on the very top of the telescope and that kind of leads us into the discussion of the types of filters you need to use and actually, interestingly enough, some simple tips for building your own solar filter. Okay, Yuri, thank you. Um, first of all, let's talk about the filter you should never use. It is the, this filter that goes on the back of your eyepiece. Uh, this is a filter that concentrates, all, the light concentrates all on the filter and the filter gets very hot. And what happens when glass is compressed and hot? It breaks. And when it breaks, it allows all the sunlight go through the glass without filtering and your eye will receive the whole light. So for this type of filter, if you find one, you only, the first thing you need to do is get a hammer, put it on, on this floor and hit it very hard so you destroy it and never anybody is tempted to use one of these filters. You should never use a filter that is behind the magnifying glasses of the optics, okay? The other type of filter is one that you can make. Uh, in this case, I bought the ring on the base with the screws and you use a special paper that will reflect 99.99% of the solar light. That means the filter will not get warm, you know, it will not get temperature, but it filter the light so you can see the sun safely. This was my first solar filter and it works very good. There is also another type of filter that you can build for big scopes. As you see, this is a filter for an 8-inch scope, and 8 inch to watch the sun is a big bucket of light, so you will have a lot of light. What we do is normally just use a very tiny fraction of the whole aperture of the 8 inch and filter the light through that one. This is the same, same, thing, same type of film that we have on this filter, and it filters properly the light and you are safely to watch the sun. And you see, this filter has an edge that enters on inside the front end of the your smith cassegrain telescope in filter or a refractor if you have one. One very important thing before you use a filter, you gotta check that it's okay and it doesn't have any kind of pinholes. To do that, you point the filter to the sun and watch through it and you, do, you will see just the light of the sun. You shouldn't see, see, shouldn't see I'm sorry, points of light, if you see a pinhole, you gotta discard that paper and that filter and create another one. Yeah, that brings up a very interesting point. 
you have an eight inch telescope, that's a big light bucket. So there's a lot of light coming in if you're looking at the sun. So a filter like this, you know, you don't have to, you're not gonna expose the entire front of that filter. You're just gonna have a very small opening to let the light in. And that's all you need for solar observing. But you see just how simple it is with just a few basic pieces of material and some techniques that, that you're, uh, you're educated on to build your own filter. It's a very simple process. But long story short, you always want to make sure that if you're going to do any type of solar observing, that the filter is on the front of the telescope and it's pre-magnified. You never want to look at light through a post-magnified, basically eyepiece size solar filter. So if you ever see one of those, like Freddie said, take a hammer to it, end it. They shouldn't even be made anymore. But if there's any of, any of them circulating out there, they're very, very dangerous. So if you get nothing else out of this video series, that's probably the most important tip. Thank you, Jeremy. One important thing is that, again, if you have children around, children around uh, don't leave the scope unattended with them, especially if you are using these filters, because these filters are very loose. They, they flap, and they, that gets their attention, and they will try to go there and punch it. It will destroy the filter. That is no problem, but if somebody is observing behind it and he doesn't realize that, he, he can damage the, the eyes of the person that is watching it. So never leave an scope unattended, especially with children around. And if the children have to be there because they want to see the sun, well, you gotta be careful and informing them that they should not touch the filter in any way because they can damage or they can drop it from the telescope. And that is very important. You should not do that, allow that. I tell you, a telescope is a great way to look at the sun. The images are spectacular, but if you don't have a telescope, a good pair of binoculars is also great. You gotta get a special type of binoculars. They're called sun oculars. You can get them on a lot of uh, astronomy websites that sell telescope equipment. I actually bought these for the Great American Solar Eclipse of August 21, 2017, last year's eclipse. We got another one coming up in a couple years, but you know, these are already filtered, so all you gotta do is look through them, I can look right up at the sun, straight up, wow, there it is. Absolutely spectacular. And I tell you, if you focus these binoculars, you can see uh, plenty of sunspot activity. It's pretty quiet today, but these are great, you know, a pair of binoculars like these is great for viewing a solar eclipse. There's actually a way you can mount these. Well, um, this is my equipment, uh, the one that I use for either imaging or observing. Here you will see three telescopes properly filtered. This is a six inch uh, uh, Maxut of Cassegrain, a refractor on this side, 66 millimeters. A finder, that is not really a finder, it is a guider. Uh, if I'm trying to get some prominences, a long video, long time, long time video of prominences, I use this telescope to guide with a camera. And also here we have an H Alpha solar telescope. This, you see, you don't need too much aperture to watch the sun. It, it just needs to be protected. Um, in this case, um, I have here a zoom eyepiece a and two regular eyepieces. In terms of the guider. I only use for guiding, I don't use as a finder. As a matter of fact, if I'm not guiding, I take it off. So nobody can look through a guider scope and take the filter off because this one takes off very easily. I take that off and get out of the equation. If you are doing a public observing session, I take that off and just have the telescope with the eyepieces. The filters that you see are very tied to the telescope. You don't want that filter to fall off by accident or by a wind, a gust of wind. Um, they are very tight, and in the case of the uh, H-Alpha telescope, it's an internal filter, so you not, cannot take it out. In order to find the sun, when you are going to observe the sun, there is a very easy technique, and it's very old, and it works fine. The first thing you will do is check the shadow of your telescope in the floor. Once you see the shadow, you will then come to your telescope and release the clutches so the telescope can rotate freely. And once you do that, you will rotate the telescope in a way that it minimizes the shade 
the shadow that the telescope makes in the ground. When the shadow is a minimum, the minimum, you are pointing at the sun and the sun is, should be at least in the field of view of your eyepieces. To fine tune the position, I discovered that this technique works very good. You see, when I assemble the telescope, I make sure that this screw on the filter is in alignment with the eyepiece on the back. So now, when I'm doing the fine tuning of centering, I verify that the uh, shade of that screw on the top is in the center of the eyepiece, as you can see here. And now there, the sun is probably in the center of the field of view. If you are like me, a gadget guy, uh, you may find interest in this type of finder. Uh, this finder works very good. It's, uh, it's very easy to make. You can make it by yourself. It consists of a small hole in the front of a plate, okay? And then you have a white surface on the back. So when you point at the sun, you will see that the uh, hole here is reflected back on the white spot. I don't know if you can capture it that here, but I'm showing it. Uh, then you can, once it's aligned, you can find the sun very easily. And I, I used that during the eclipse last year. So I don't, I didn't lose the sun for any reason. I will be able, if I lose the sun for any reason, I will be able to find it without trouble. Uh, now we have the computer connected to the telescope with a camera on the H-Alpha telescope. And as you see here, I'm pounding at the disk. The disk is overexposed in order to check for something very interesting here, that is prominences. If I move the image to the right now, you will see there are some nice prominences on the sun right now. Uh, in, at this moment, you may see that they are kind of fuzzy. But once we process the information on the image, they will come up very, very, very good. Well, now we have here the application I use to move my mount synchronized with the computer. Uh, that is not necessarily for imaging, but well, I have a setup that allows me to do that. I have better control. As you can see here, I have a, just a gamepad joystick. With this, I can control the telescope up or down or east, west, north, south. So it's, it's very funny because uh, what would you think with a game pad you control your telescope? This is good because if I need to go to the, to the mount and move it or center something, I can go with this, it's wireless. So I don't have to have the control by my hand. On the other hand, if you have the controller, the normal controller there, you, are, you have to be close to the telescope so you can get it, grab it to center or move the image. Okay. With this one, I can do that. I, co I connect the telescope to this application, this uh, um, sky chart. It's a, uh, a free program that you can use. And as you see, it's centered on the sun. The other, this software calls an application that is the one that connects to my telescope, that is called EQMod. And here I have a representation of all the parameters that I need to uh, know to operate the mount. By example, here I have a GPS and I have a GPS connected to the mount over there. So when I click here on GPS, it will get the absolute exact latitude and longitude and the time, the sidereal time that is good to also know where you are going to point at the sun. Here in this, I can change my tracking rate and as you see, I have a solar tracking rate. That is not much, but well, if you can have it, why not use it? Here I also have a controller for going north, south, east and west and here I have a graph showing me the position of the mount, where the mount is positioned. All these can be done efficiently with a hand controller. But as you see, it's very hot outside today. I'm sitting on, on the shade of my garage. There is a nice breeze and I don't have to be on the sun for that. Well, you see, I press the record button here, and now uh, it's taking an image of the sun 
overexposed to show uh, the prominences. When you see at the sun in H alpha, you can see the prominences with your eyes because your eyes are more, have a better, a wider dynam dynamic range, so you can see the difference between dark and very bright, and your eye will compensate for that. In the case of a camera, they don't have that ability, so you have to do two exposures. You need to do one exposure on very high uh, saturation of the sun to capture uh, the fine details of the of the prominences and then you will need a normal regular image of the surface of the sun so you can mix them together. Now I'm going to take in a, in a lower exposure again a video of the sun 500 frames in a good exposure. You see uh, the detail is on the surface right now. The prominences are kind of visible here but not good enough to be uh, put in, a one, in one picture. So what we are going to do I, I'm taking another video and later I will send the resource to Jeremy so he can post that on the video. Thanks a lot, Freddie. I tell you, it's pretty spectacular looking at the sun through this telescope on his computer mount as well as just through the eyepiece. It's really spectacular to see the surface details on the sun, especially on a day like today. So thanks a lot. Again, guys, I want to remind you that the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month every Friday. Christian Brothers University, Assessi Hall, room 155, meeting start at 8 o'clock p.m. Our website is memphisastral.org. We also conduct two dark sky observing sessions. Today, of course, is a beautiful day, but if we get a clear night and a moonless night, we do two dark sky observing sessions in northwest Mississippi. So check out our website, memphisastral.org. We're also on Facebook, on Twitter, and stay tuned for more episodes of Telescope Tips on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Memphis Astronaut Society. And if you like this video, stay tuned for others in the series and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For Freddie Diaz, I'm Jeremy Veldman. We'll see you guys on our next episode.